Buenos dias. Me llamo Stephanie from Apex Languages. Who's ready to learn some more Spanish vocabulario? Well, we finished our unit on introductions, and so now we're going to practice doing more descriptions, and I'm going to give you some useful vocabulary about the family, la familia. Repeat after me. La familia. La familia. La familia. Let's start with the mother. Sorry, I'm a little biased, right? La madre. La madre. La madre. You can also say la mamá. La mamá. La mamá. Or even la mami. La mami. La mami. Mommy is a lot more common in Spanish than it is in English. You have that stigma, right, in English, that if you're more than three years old, she's not your mommy anymore, she's your mom, okay? Um, but, you know, that doesn't really exist. For Spanish speakers, they'll call their mother's mommy if they're 50 years old, okay? They actually prefer mommy. La madre, you know, the mother, very formal. Mama is that middle ground. Okay, but uh, be aware, mommy, very common. Similarly, we've got el padre, el padre, el padre. We've got el papá. Now, be very careful with this one because uh, if you say it wrong, if you say papa, it's potato. Don't call your father a potato. He doesn't like that, okay? So, um, papá. The accent marks on the end, and that tells you you need to give the end your emphasis. Okay, so not papa, but papa. El papa. Papa. Also, papi. 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 Now, if you put them together, you have los padres. So let's look here for a moment at the la, right? La familia. El padre, los padres. All three of those mean the. La and el are both singular. La is feminine, el is masculine. When you're plural, los or las. Los is masculine, las is feminine. Um, if you have a group of 99 women and one male, it's always going to be masculine. Okay, so when in doubt, go with masculine. Um, but, you know, this is all important because adjectives and other things, uh, in this case, the articles, are, need to match in Spanish. So keep that in mind. Even your article, even the, needs to match number and in gender. So la madre, she's feminine, obviously. El padre, masculine. Los padres, because there's one girl but one boy so it's masculine okay las madres um so los padres are the parents padre with an s let's pronounce that padres 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 now what about these short people over here well you've got el hijo remember h is silent and e la hija Okay, son and daughter. This is a great thing about Spanish. In English, we have a really weird system when it comes to our relatives because the words are completely different. Son, nice and easy, wonderful, daughter, a terribly difficult word. Um, but in Spanish, it's one word with slight variation. Uh, and by slight variation, I mean the gender is different. The O for masculine and A for feminine okay so uh, this will help you you have less vocabulary to learn so repeat after me el hijo el hijo el hijo and daughter la hija la hija la hija what about brothers and sisters again brother sister very different words in english in spanish we have el hermano and la hermana. So repeat after me. Hermano. 
hermano, hermano, and uh, for sister, hermana, hermana, hermana. Finally, husband and wife. Again, very different in Spanish. We we will go with the word spouse, right? So el esposo is the husband, y la esposa is the wife. El esposo. So repeat after me. Esposo. 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 And for wife, esposa. 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 Now for a few quick cultural notes. To start with, Spanish speakers tend to use these family titles much more frequently than we do in English. For example, I still refer to my parents as mom and dad, but I use my sibling's name when talking to them and about them. In Spanish, though, you're more likely to hear brothers and sisters calling each other hermano or hermana. This is even more true when it comes to hijo and hija. In fact, the phrase my son and my daughter are used so frequently that they developed their own spelling, mijo and mija, an abbreviated form of mi, my, hijo, and mi, hija. Hermano, brother, can also be used to refer to your buddies or bros, not too different than in English, although this is less common with hermana. Spanish speakers also tend to call other family members, uncles, aunts, and cousins in particular, hermano or hermana. Finally, we come to mommy. I already mentioned that mommy is much more common than an English mommy, but this term can also be used to describe a wide variety of other females. You can use it and poppy to describe your daughter or son respectively for one, setting the record for pressuring kids for grandchildren from a very young age. In this case, it's usually in the diminutive cute form, mamita or papito. On the other hand, as girls get older, they should be wary of young men calling them mommy in much the same way that English speakers would use chick. Slightly chauvinist, but with varying degrees of vulgarity. That is to say, between boyfriends and girlfriends, it can simply be a, a cute pet name. But it also features prominently in catcalling, with strong sexual implications. Clearly, this is a complicated term that should be avoided by language novices, unless you're referring directly to the woman who gave birth to you. So now that you've met the family, let's get a little bit of practice describing them. You've seen both of these charts before. Ser and estar both mean to be. Okay, said is a permanent B and estar is temporary. Uh, we're going to practice the forms L y Asia. L is he, Asia is she. So if you're describing something that's always the case, L S. If you're saying that something's only uh, temporary, like uh, how you're feeling today, you would use L esta. The second chart. Um, are a couple of adjectives I've given you in the past. So we've got happy, feliz, sad, triste, big, grande, and small, pequeño or pequeña, depending on whether it's el o ella. So we've got our family. Tell me, how do you think you would say the mother is happy? First of all, how do you say mother? Madre right and then happy feliz now the tricky part do you use said or estar okay well feliz that's only temporary so we're going to say la mamá está feliz now what about the father let's say the father is big well what's father el papá right Big is grande. And then do we use ser or estar? Well, are you always big or are you big for a little bit of time? When we're talking about people, that's a permanent concept. So we're going to say, el papá es grande. The father is big. El papá es grande. Now, let's say 
the boy is sad. Based on this picture, he's a little bit more annoyed that his parents are being weird. Okay, but you don't know annoyed. Triste is sad. I gave that one away. I'm sorry. But <laughs> you remember how to say the sun? The sun is sad. Sun is hijo. Do you say rosa? Hopefully, triste is temporary. So we're going to say, el hijo está triste. Last but not least, the girl is small. What's a girl or a daughter? The daughter is hija. Small is pequeño. But remember, hija is feminine, so you would say pequeña. Cerro estad. Okay, what do you think it is? La hija es pequeña. You use S because it's permanent. La hija es pequeña. I'm going to teach you one more new thing today, and that is how to make B plural. Okay, um, it's not too complicated. So we had two forms before, now we're up to uh, three forms. So yo soy, usted es, ustedes son. So, you know, usted is always going to act like a third person, even though it's a second person you, right? Usted is the formal you. Um, uh, like I said before, the informal you uh, varies by location. It's different in Spain. It's different in South America. So I'm not really going to cover it. Maybe later, way later. But ustedes. Ellos, ellos. That's all third person. And that form of ser is son. So ustedes son, ellos son, ellas son. For stars, están. So you can see the pattern here, you're adding an N. Ustedes están, ellos están, ellas están. All right, so let's get back to practicing. Let's say I want to say the parents are happy. Okay, the parents are happy. How would I say that? Well, how do you say parents? Los padres. Happy. Again, do I use cero or estar? Estar. Okay, so the uh, they están, right? Feliz. Los padres están felices. So, uh, it's an adjective. The adjectives have to match the noun in number and gender. Now, the Z in Spanish uh, turns into a C. Don't worry about that. That's a spelling thing. You can pick that up later. Um, but you need the S. Okay. And because uh, Zs and, and Ss are a very similar sound, just like in English, we add the extra syllables. So, los padres están felices. Los padres están felices. How about the children? The, 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 the children are small. How would you say that? How do you say children? It wasn't on the chart, but you add an S, right? Los hijos. And then what would you do with pequeño? Let's look. Los hijos son pequeños. So again, pequeños needs to match hijos. Los hijos son pequeños. Hopefully you guys están felices. I hope you learned something new. If you'd like, there's more videos at apexlanguages.com. Thank you as always for watching. Have a safe, healthy day.